Working to get your taxes done, you have two Topeka locations to mail from until midnight tonight to ensure that April 15th postmark. You can drop your returns off in a box at the main post office downtown, as this line is doing, or at the North Topeka Postal Annex at 2520 North Kansas. If you do it by midnight, you'll have the April 15th postmark. Some local tax preparers today said they found themselves scrambling to help last-minute customers. They say business was a bit better this year because many customers were confused, thinking that the new tax laws went into effect for 86, when tax year 1987 is the big year to worry about. I think the returns are getting more complicated every year, and a lot of the information that is required now by the IRS, the people just don't uh, understand. Emmert says about a third of her office's business is done in the last two weeks, and tonight, perhaps some of those taxpayers we're seeing here live are mailing those very forms. Dave, they're doing it under... Well, nothing is ideal when you're mailing your tax forms, I guess, but as no. ideal as we can get. In fact, I was wondering if there's anybody still in line, still figuring their taxes. <laughs> as figuring, they drive up. That's right, figuring that, well, maybe it's going to be a long line. It looks like it is right now. We have pretty good weather out there right now. The weather is going to continue to improve over the next four to five days after what we've seen in the past uh, several. We'll see highs climb out of the 60s into the 70s and 80s for the most part. Slipping back to the 60s on Monday, a chance for rain as we close out the weekend and begin another week. Thanks, Dave. Coming up as our local news at 10 continues for you tonight, in Topeka, group residences for retarded citizens have been so successful, there's a waiting list. Tonight, Eileen Houston reports Sheltered Living of Topeka is working toward raising funds to help with that waiting list. And while Northeast Kansas has avoided spring tornadoes so far, another part of the country has not. That story coming up. Brad here with sports tonight. Our first no-hitter. That's right. Out of the Milwaukee camp, we'll take a look at the highlights in that particular game. And Kevin Seitzer with some timely hitting as the Royals wrap up their homestand. These stories and more coming up. Stay with us. The Sheltered Living Program has provided residential housing to mentally retarded and handicapped adults. But the need for service has increased faster than the availability of housing. WIBW's Eileen Houston reports tonight the organization has plans to change all that. From the outside, this house looks just like any other house in the neighborhood. But inside is a unique program that teaches handicapped and mentally retarded adults independent living skills. Colleen, who has lived at this residence for a year now, says she enjoys living with the nine other people in the house. And living with others has taught her responsibility. We have uh, to, keep our, to keep our rooms clean. And then we have individual uh, chores like um, taking the trash out, making the salads, and setting the tables. And we have our, our own laundry schedules that we go by. Currently, Sheltered Living serves 92 adults in Topeka, like Colleen and Marlon, in group homes and apartment settings. But there is a waiting list of 100 people who need the same kind of care. Tonight, a campaign was launched with hopes of raising funding through this barbecue to build a new group home that will provide housing for more adults with mental retardation. The goal is $500,000 by the end of May, and the executive director of the program says if they meet their goal, they will look for land in a normal neighborhood setting. I think it's important to be in a regular neighborhood, not only for the clients, but for the people that live in neighborhoods. We have a better understanding uh, that mentally retarded individuals are not necessarily uh, totally disabled, but they have a lot to contribute. Sheltered Living receives funding from the federal, state, and local levels, as well as private donations. The organization recently received some minor budget cuts, but Larson says her group will do everything they can to continue to help these people become more independent than they currently are. Eileen Houston, WIBW News at 10. Governor Hayden signed a bill into law today that he says represents historic changes in Kansas. Hayden's signature made it legal for Kansans in 36 counties to order liquor by the drink. The governor signed the 78-page law before a small group of legislators and members of the Kansas Republican Party in suburban Kansas City. The law means Kansas in the 36 counties that approved liquor by the drink will be able to buy drinks without a club card. Counties that rejected the amendment will have a chance to vote on the issue again as soon as 1988. The law, by the way, goes into effect July 1st. Before Governor Hayden put pen to paper today on the liquor by the drink bill, he attended a ceremony honoring one of Kansas' former governors. Hayden was part of a dedication today renaming the old Santa Fe office building, that building renamed for former Governor Alf Landon. Governor Hayden says the dedication is a tribute to everything Landon has done for Kansas, 
Landon's daughter, Senator Nancy Kassebaum, says it's a tribute her father appreciates. At another Landon namesake, the Expo Center's Landon Arena, 240 high school students tonight sang and played a grand opening concert. Guest of honor with students, Louis Belson, husband of Pearl Bailey, who spoke last night. Belson is a renowned drummer who's played with the likes of Benny Goodman. He spent all afternoon rehearsing with the if students, saying they inspired him. Hey, I came here to work with you, you know, but I'm not going to tell you that everything we're going to do is right, because if you learn something from me, and I learn something from you, I want to meet you on an eye level, and let's get the job done so when the performance comes tonight, it's going to be right. A special treat at tonight's concert was the band piece titled Fanfare for an Expo Center. Topeka music teacher Ruben Corona composed the score. Governor Landon also has a lecture series in his honor, and today a prominent conservative columnist was the 74th Landon lecturer. George Will centered his remarks on taxes, an appropriate subject for April 15th. He says we'll have to help pay for the federal deficit in the form of higher taxes. At a news conference prior to his address, Will said Kansas Senator Bob Dole is no longer just an up-and-coming national candidate for president. I think, I think he's up and come already. I, th I don't think he can any longer be called a dark horse. In the last poll I saw, he was ahead in Iowa. Dole was ahead of Bush. That fact was, I think, produced not so much by Bush's problems with a connection to the Rand Contra affair as the agricultural distress in Iowa and Dole's identification with agricultural causes. Will said Dole must move away from his image as a lawmaker and develop a campaign theme for the future. Today, Dole was campaigning in Missouri as part of a nine-state swing. When we come back, no Easter furlough for John Hinckley, Jr. And a bit later, local high school students are honored for their academic achievements. <laughs> in Brussels tonight, preparing to brief European allies on his talks with Soviet leader Mikhail Gorbachev. Schultz said today before he left Moscow that he and the Soviets made quite a bit of progress on a pact that would eliminate medium-range missiles in Europe. Schultz says an agreement between Washington and Moscow is close at hand, but some tough negotiating is still necessary. Schultz did tell Gorbachev, however, he would have to consult with America's NATO allies before he would accept the agreement. Soviet news agencies attacked Schultz for not taking immediate action on the proposal. As Libya commemorates, even celebrates, the anniversary of America's raid of one year ago, a rare appearance tonight by her leader. Muammar Gaddafi today attended a rally marking that bombing, describing the incident as, quote, horrors of the aborted American aggression, end quote. Gaddafi was not the only one rallying today. The Libyan government even paid for some American Indians and other Americans to come over and denounce the raids. The Libyan news agency says the Tripoli march began Tuesday night and lasted until early Wednesday. It appears President Reagan's would-be assassin won't be allowed to visit his family this Easter. John Hinckley Jr. apparently spoiled his chances for that visit by choosing the wrong pen pal. The mental hospital where he was committed for shooting President Reagan and three other men today withdrew its proposal to allow Hinckley an unescorted visit home. It was learned earlier this week Hinckley has written several letters to multiple ki killer Theodore Bundy and Squeaky Fromm, the woman who tried to shoot former President Ford. The hospital says it needs time to study writings and other materials found in a search of Hinckley's room yesterday. One woman was killed today, and at least seven others were injured by a series of tornadoes that cut a five to six mile path through Florida. One tornado caused severe damage in a five mile stretch through rural central Florida. A deputy sheriff reports several mobile homes were destroyed, many other homes damaged. Some parts of the area tonight still without electricity. Coming up closer to home, things are much quieter. Dave has that in a moment.